Okay, in this video we're going to have a look at Adventure Game Studio. That's like a development environment for point and click games. A bit like ScumVM. Uh, whereas ScumVM emulates existing games from uh, say like LucasArts, say Monkey Island type games, Simon the Sorcerer, uh, Beneath the Steel Sky, those sort of things. The Adventure Game Studio is more of a sort of homebrew indie um, way that individuals or small companies can get their games out and develop them from scratch. So that's going to be what we're looking at on the RetroPie installation, obviously running on a Raspberry Pi. I'm using version 3.5 and because it's relatively new in the RetroPie environment, um, it's under the experimental section, so you've got to install it yourself, but it's very straightforward, just a couple of small tweaks and then you can see how it runs. Now, predominantly, it seems like Adventure Game Studio typically runs under the Windows environment and I found that running a few games the Pi does struggle a little bit, um, so it's definitely worth overclocking the CPU, and I'll show you that menu here, because you do see a bit of a speed benefit. But some games, even so, do seem quite slow. Now, it's not really a problem for a point-and-click style game that Adventure Game Studios um, games are, because you don't need it to be you know, split-second accuracy or anything like that, but um, some games certainly run better than others. Okay, so first, we'll overclock. Um, you probably know how to do this anyway, but I'll just show you where it is in the menu. So if we go to RetroPie menu, and here we've got the Raspberry Pi configuration tool, Raspberry Config. So in there, what we'll do is, and I haven't changed anything on this installation other than it automatically rebooted to resize the file system, but besides that, it's stock 3.5. Um, okay, so number eight, overclock we choose that and just gives you a warning that you shouldn't really overclock if you don't have to but it's fine. Uh, Pi 2 is the overclock because I've got a Pi 2. If you've got a, a B or a B plus then you can choose one of the previous options but I'm going to choose the Pi 2 overclock option there. Okay so that's done and um, because I've changed that it says do I want to reboot now but I'll do it in a moment so no. Okay, so that's overclocked. Now we use the experimental menu to install this, and that's under the RetroPie setup. So if we go in there, and we choose the number four experimental packages, and we're looking for the AGS or Adventure Game Studio, that's the first one at the top there, Adventure Game Engine, and this will download and compile the, um, the binary file to run this so it can take uh, quite a few minutes maybe uh, I don't know five or six minutes so I'll skip to the end but at this point you do need your Raspberry Pi to have an internet connection so it can download these files so I'll select that and at this point there won't, you don't need to interact with it it'll just crack on uh, and install it and like I say this is a you can check out the links that I put in the video description but it's um, like a, a development environment for hobbyists who want to uh, make your own point-and-click game. There's also some commercial games available which they let you download a demo of, try it out, and then you can buy the game. Um, but there's hundreds and hundreds of free games as well. So it's worth a look at their website because they've got links to all of the games there. And uh, it's quite a lot to choose from. It's bound to be something that you like. And like I say, it's very comparable to that whole sort of scum VM type emulator where you've got the classic games like the Monkey Island series. But uh, it's pretty good. I've tried a few games out. Um, some of them, like I say, run a bit slow, but other ones uh, run no problem at all. And as you saw, this is in the experimental section, so there's a couple of tweaks that you've got to do to get this working. But uh, it's, it's pretty simple, and it works well. Okay, so we'll skip to the end of this uh, install process and carry on. Okay, so that took about five minutes to build, and we're back at the uh, RetroPie menu, and we're going to quit out of this back to Emulation Station. So if we do that with Cancel and Cancel, and we get back to Emulation Station there. Now, the uh, Adventure Game Studio menu doesn't appear yet because uh, we haven't restarted Emulation Station, but before I do that, what I'm going to do is just drop into the command line and uh, do a couple of extra tweaks. So to do that, just press Start, and under quit menu, choose quit emulation station and it'll just go into the command line interface and I'll just change the view here to zoom in on the text so you can see what I'm going to do.
Okay, here we are at the command line, and what we're going to do is see the extra folders and files that the installation of AGS has uh, has put. So yeah, we're in the home directory here, and we're going to change into retropy forward slash roms, and here you can see a new directory that's appeared is this one, AGS. So if we go in AGS, that's where uh, you want to copy the files across, and if I list that, I've created two directories called uh, well the name of the games that I've downloaded. So rather than just put the games in this directory, I've created a folder and then the games inside that. And the reason for that is because with the way that Adventure Game Studio wraps up the final files, quite often you end up with a file name that's the same, like um, one of the music files. So it's easier if you just put it into a folder and find it. Okay, so if we go into the journey down folder, you can see that it's with three files. Um, this is the important one, the .exe and the .exe is what AGS will run. It's just then, it will then look for, uh, if relevant, the music.vox, or sometimes it's audio.vox or speech.vox. It's like a separate audio file that um, uh, is part of the game. I've read that sometimes you can get the, the music built into the actual executable, so if it doesn't find the .vox, it doesn't necessarily mean that you won't get sound, but it just seems preferable to include it. So I put that there and also the configuration file that it'll read in the main directory. Now you can skip that and it just loads the defaults which is fine as well. So I've not really seen necessarily a big advantage in including the CFG but you can if you need to. And if we take a quick look at that CFG file you can see it's just got some basic sound and miscellaneous settings uh, to see how that should work but I've not found an issue not including this so it's not a big deal. Um, okay, so that's where you'll put your ROMs. Now when you do download games, sometimes you'll find there's a single executable that you've downloaded, but if you put that in this directory or, or this ROM folder, sometimes it won't work because that executable you download is the installer or the Windows installer, so you need to install it and then go and find that in the directory where you've installed it on the Windows computer, the actual executable of the game. So just be aware that sometimes the executable isn't the real one. hope that makes sense. Um, but you'll see where it is because when you see the actual executable it's quite often got a Vox file with it. So copy those across to um, this AGS directory or if you want into uh, a custom directory in the AGS folder. But it's the executable file that Emulation Station will look for to run so that's what you'll see appear in your listing. Uh, so that's the ROM folder. Separately there's uh, always the configuration file so if we look at or rather the configuration directory so if we look in opt retropy configs again we've now got a new folder appeared called ags so if we go in ags we've got the emulators.cfg now the reason you're not seeing a retroarch.cfg is because adventure game studio has nothing to do with retroarch it won't use retroarch's config files its controller files anything to do with it it's a separate emulator altogether so uh, controls i found are basically mouse which you'd expect in a point to click and also the keyboard um, does do certain functions like if you hit escape it sort of skip a scene um, but it's pretty limited from the keyboard side from what I found so far it's predominantly uh, driven by a mouse so you do need to put a mouse into the Raspberry Pi. Uh, okay so we've got the emulators uh, file here which is what emulation station kind of uses to run the executable and we can see what that looks like here. So the emulator process um, for AGS Adventure Game Studio runs this command here, x init, which I think uh, is kind of um, begins a, a sort of graphical element so you can present the, the graphics in the way it's expecting. Um, it runs, then this is the path to AGS itself, and it's passing a parameter full screen and then just runs a ROM. So basically it just run it in full screen and away you go. Now a couple of things here. One is, I don't think on 3.5 by default, this program isn't installed, so you need to install that. I'll show you how in a minute. And also, if you try to run it on its own, it complains about permissions. So I found if you edit this line to say, effectively run it with higher permissions, it's fine. So prefix it with sudo and a space, and you should be good to go. So I'll quit that. It says, do I want to save my change? I say yes. And finally, to write to emulators.cfg, press enter. There we go, so I've made that change. And what we do, we just very quickly look at the actual executable so you can see where it is. Um, a lot of what I'm going through here is optional, you don't need to do it. The main thing really was just changing that command um, in the emulator CFG that we just did. 
So here we go to OctoRetroPy, Emulators, and you can see in this emulator folder we've got AGS now. And in AGS you've got a binary folder, and then that's the actual command that will run. And just so you're aware, you can see if we do this command, so run it with a help flag, these are the commands you could pass to it if you really wanted. It's not particularly extensive, but it's an optional. Um, so you can specify various paths. And what we'll do in a minute as well is I'll show you where um, the save file games go. So you can find out uh, where they're stored if you need to. But largely, I wouldn't change a lot of this path because it's all geared for the RetroPie folder structure anyway. So I've showed you where you put the ROMs and where the config goes, or rather the command to run it goes. And this is just, just extra info, really. Okay, now we did need to install that extra program, which was uh, X in it. So if you run this command here, um, I'll go back to the home directory, although it shouldn't really matter. And we're going to go sudo app get install X in it. Uh, hit enter there. And it will probably just ask uh, this to take, there we go, 23 meg. Are you sure? I say yes. I don't, I don't think there's any downside in installing this. It seems uh, quite happy when I've tried before. But uh, it'll take maybe uh, a couple of minutes and then uh, it'll just say all installed and then you're ready to go. We'll go back into emulation station at that point. So I'll just skip ahead. Okay, that's all installed. And what you can do now is just type emulation station to go back into emulation station and the Adventure Game Studio should appear. But uh, because I overclocked earlier, um, I want to get that into effect. So I'm just going to reboot before and this will go back into re emulation station uh, and it'll be overclocked so a bit more um, performance on these games so I'm going to hit that and we'll load back in and fire up Adventure Game Studio okay so back in emulation station and the first emulator that is shown is AGS that's because it's by default alphabetical previously it would have been the Amiga and the reason it's got the white background sort of no theme is because emulation station hasn't got uh, a theme set up within this um, or rather it hasn't got a um, definition for this emulator in its theme and this is using carbon but none of the other themes will have uh, this in it either so it's going to be pretty bland there unlike the other ones that just go back to the default because there's a theme but if you want to you could create one as well but anyway that's the reason it's not wrong it's just that's why it's white okay so in the AGS directory as you saw before I put a couple of folders and I did find that it doesn't like spaces in the folders so um, put a hyphen or underscore or uh, some character just to make it a single string and you can see the folders there and the reason for that is it's better than uh, when it's got multiple files that if they're named the same you can't put them all in the same directory so it's just uh, clearer if you put them in um, folders like that okay so what we'll do is fire one of these up and you can see how it runs and after what we we'll do is see how it saves files and also how the graphics work because um, by default I find a lot of these the, the native resolution is quite low but when you uh, increase that to get it on a high def TV the speed really suffers so I'm not too sure how to get around that problem properly but there's a good middle ground anyway I've set uh, this to sort of effectively um, increase the resolution by about three times so um, my TV sort of emulates 1080p um, and you'll see it covers most of the screen but I could go bigger again but then it would go slower anyway so in one of those folders it then shows you the executable file there's only one executable file here so that's what it's showing me and I start that with A on the joypad now I've got a mouse plugged in um, because that's that's what it's going to need okay so you've got the intro screen there I've got new load or quit um, move the mouse there we go Let's go for new and see the intro here.
Okay, and if you want to skip ahead, you can just use the keyboard and hit escape and it skips the scene like this. And again, and I think this is the character you play. Um, and we get back again. And okay, so I've got control now with the mouse. So at the top there, on this game anyway, you've got save and load and quit. And there's a bit of space down the bottom for um, extra sort of details as well but the edge of the screen there is is some way off um, where my actual TV is but again this is because of the way that the screen's rendered and I'll show you the setting for that in a minute um, just to click about and you can see it working if we go here And uh, there we go, so pretty straightforward to get up and running. There's not an awful lot of tweaks that need to, to go on. Um, what we'll do is we save again. You can see where that goes on the file system. Okay, so save again. And quit. There we go, I'll drop back into the command line interface and you can see where the um, details are for the uh, file location for the save games, etc. Okay, command line interface. And what we're gonna do is look at the save game um, location. Now it's kind of odd, it's quite an obscure place. If we go to the root here uh, with cd forward slash, we need to go in the root directory. Now if you try going there normally, it says permission denied, so we've got to up the permission to navigate so you kind of create a command line in the command line um, this is, I mean you can keep the save game files exactly where they are you don't need to do this it's just uh, so you're aware really okay sudo bash now if I do change directory to root um, I'm in that directory and I should be able to see some hidden files there we go it's one called local so we're going to change directory into local and um, then we're going to go into that share directory and in there, you've got the AGS directory. Um, there's the game I was playing over the edge. Change directory in there. And there's my save game file. So that's where they are. Um, maybe in a future um, RetroPie version, this can be forced to be saved somewhere else. But um, that's where they are at the moment. So if we exit out of that sort of bash script I was in, back to normal. And the last thing we look at is the config file that we looked at briefly earlier, which is under. Um, configs and the AGS directory. Now in that, no wait, sorry, wrong directory. It's um, RetroPie ROM, so it's in the same directory where you put your ROMs. Uh, we want the AGS one. And the example we were looking in, which was Journey Down, it's called Over the Edge Journey Down. Okay, so I change into that one, and we can see that there's a AC Setup .cfg. Uh, this one here. Now, if you delete that, it just uses the defaults and it kind of works okay, but it does make it completely full screen and quite a bit of slowdown. So if you do use a system CFG, it, it'll probably work, but if you have problems, delete it, is what I'm saying. And if we look at this one, the interesting, the only two interesting parts I've found really that seem to make an effect um, are default res, which kind of implies the, the standard resolution that the game was written in. So, Typically, I'd keep that the same. I'll put a link in the comment and uh, the description about what these values mean and how you can tweak them. But the key one really is this one here, the graphics filter. Now, if I change that to 
that value there to none it does it in its sort of native resolution and it's really quick it's really it performs really well but if you want to take up a bit more of the screen space um, you can up it with this standard scale you can have values of two three or four I think to multiply it up and I found three works quite well while still keeping the speed usable um, but anyway feel free to change that that's what I tweaked to get it uh, working a bit quicker but you can delete the whole file um, and it just sort of defaults into maximum screen resolution so it's big on the screen but a little bit slow or you could be really it would do it really quick and change that to none on a and it's a tiny little um, about 320 by 200 pixels wide picture um, but any questions please put it in the comments uh, otherwise you should be up and running with adventure game studio